These are all gluten free cupcakes. And this is a vegan cupcake right here, a carrot cupcake. And it's got chocolate cakes. Sausage stuff. Sausage stuff. Sausage stuff. Alright, cool. Is all that stuff on the menu? No. So, if you want anything from the I might have to just take one of those spicy. Do they bake it for you? Do they bake what? The spicy lentil sweet potato and apple samosa. I'm not sure. The best thing to visit. So excited from Washington. Hanging out with some friends. Okay, we started eating, but this is my burger. <laughs> how is it, sister? Delicious. Really good, huh? Mm -hmm. Joyce, how are you liking yours? That's amazing. The salmon. This is too good. Too good. This is a uh, breakfast pasty. I don't even know what a pasty is, but this thing is incredible. Nice. This is a uh, spinach pita. It's like a spinach. Hi. Yum. Off the chain. And then Tyler, he got the same thing that I got. I want a bell and What's inside of that? Is that it's it's so so good, guys? So we just found this beautiful lake right here that we're at. It is so beautiful here in Grand Rapids. We're just kind of walking around, taking in the scenery, hanging out with the friends. We're just having a really good time. So we're just going to probably either lay on the grass or find a um, table over here and just kind of relax and just take it. This is Judah after all. everybody ate. He's looking Except one, three. Look at him looking around. Five. He's looking around the pool. And nothing for Juju. <laughs> Tell us. Yeah, I'm sorry. Where's yes. your cup? Sorry, Juju. <laughs> sorry, son. Sorry, Bam Bam. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you so I give you some. I give you some when they're not looking, okay? <laughs>
didn't get an opportunity to fully read. But Paul was making his defense before a Gentile governor named Festus and a king named Agrippa. And Paul was essentially talking about how he had converted from Judaism to Christianity. And maybe you remember, but Saul had quite a conversion experience. And so he's, he's telling before a court of people exactly what the Lord Jesus Christ had done for him in his life and how he had been responsive to what God had done in his life. How he was faithful to the calling that he now believed Jesus Christ had revealed to him and has shared the truth of his new life in Jesus. We hear the infamous words of King Agrippa who after hearing everything that Paul had to say makes this statement. You almost persuade me to be a Christian. People in America aren't even saying you almost persuaded me anymore. What they're really saying today is, I, I don't even want to hear what you have to say altogether, to be honest. What compounds the problem is that not only are people outside the church becoming less and less persuaded to be a Christian, but did you know that the church? That our Adventist church is actually hemorrhaging young people? Did you know that? Yeah. It's true for a long time. They say that right now about 60% of our young people ages 18 to 29 who were formerly engaged in the church during their teenage years will exit the Christian church will exit Seventh-day Adventism by the time they're 29. 60%. That's 3 out of 5. That means the 100 young people that I have the privilege of spending time with and preaching and teaching to this week, more than half of them will not be here if we, if we reconvene in 12 years. But the problem is, with the way that our society is changing, and the times in which we live, they are, we know now they are no longer coming back. They aren't returning to the church. When they disengage, they remain disengaged. And this breaks my heart. It really does. It breaks my heart. And I think it breaks the heart of a lot of you as well. We're hemorrhaging young people and what I believe is implied in their exodus is that they're telling us not that you've almost persuaded me to be a Christian, but that you actually persuaded me to be an almost Christian. I wonder if we're transmitting information, especially to our young people, about who God is and the doctrines that we believe, but are we transmitting passion? And are we transmitting desire? Are we transmitting what is of utmost importance or what we need them to learn, recite, and know about? And this is the, the lesson that, that, I, that I believe that we stand to learn this morning. The preeminence of God in your life is the prerequisite to following Christ. That God would have primary resonance in our lives. The things in our life that are preventing the preeminence of the love of God to be first in our heart would be sold, would be given up. And I love how when Jesus tells the rich young woman to sell it, he says, give it to the needy. That, that you giving up that which prevents you from following me will actually benefit somebody else. My challenge to somebody this morning who hears the simplicity of these words would be that as you gave up that thing that's preventing the preeminence of the love of God in your heart, that you would know that someone stands to benefit from it. it might be a father 
who is far too consumed with his golf swing these days. And his daughter stands to benefit from him relinquishing the time that he's been spending away from home. Maybe for a young person, it's the one that God will eventually bring into your life. You might be a college student on your way to, to a relationship that's going to come, but, but until you give up that thing that is preventing the greatness that God has for you, the person that God wants to bring in your life does not stand to benefit from all that you will be. My prayer today is that you would give up that thing that is preventing the primacy of God in your life and that the love of Jesus Christ will come in and so fill you that we will be not almost but altogether Christians serving faithfully the kingdom of God.